I am ripping the highway back to the house right now. Bump. Ugh. And when we get there, we're gonna jump right into changing the oil on the truck. It is overdue and we definitely need to get it swapped out. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. I've just been waiting on a certain something to show up at the house and uh, I'll show you that when we get back there. And I'll also show you what oil we're gonna be using and explain why I am going with that oil this time around, even though things probably are gonna change with the fluids that I run in the truck. I just didn't have time to wait on stuff to get here due to the whole mess with shipping and stuff like that with everything going on in the world right now. So we had to use what was readily available to us. I'll see you guys at the house. All right, so first things first, we've got a fuel leak and I know where it's coming from. It is right up here at our fuel pressure sensor, which you can probably see is right here. I do have some hose clamps on there right now because I initially thought that it was dripping from there and then that didn't clear it up. So I looked a little closer and saw that where it's connected to the T fitting right down in there, is a little stained and discolored so i noticed that there was fuel coming out of that put a hose clamp on there and we're still getting fuel coming out of this line so i believe it's the actual sensor and maybe it's worked itself loose a little bit i don't know but we're gonna pull that sensor out and we're gonna wrap some thread tape on it but we got to address that i need to let the engine cool down a little bit and we also need to pull the drain plug on the oil pan and start getting that drained we got this package right here in the truck, which is from our friends at Gino's Garage. And this right here is a absolute lifesaver to anybody who is going to be doing an oil change on a 6.7 truck. Look at these guys. Gino's always going above and beyond. Sending some Smarties. We got a little Fireball, a little package of gummy bears. Man, I tell you, they're the best. Usually they're sending popcorn and other stuff, that is it. But this here is an oil filter wrench that will go on the bottom of the filter when we go to bust it loose from the truck. And then I believe it's a 3 8 size right here that I can stick a breaker bar or a ratchet in there just to get a good grip on the bottom of the filter and we can break it loose to break that seal. And then in this box is a billet aluminum cap. And then we thread this little hook, this little eye loop into it. And what this does is threads right into the top of your oil filter. So when you fill the oil filter back up and you've got to put it on the truck, it won't be pouring the oil out all over the place and making a giant mess. This right here, absolute game changer and a must have. Even if you don't have a 6.7 truck, this will help out tremendously in doing oil changes. Because I even used to spill a little bit of oil when I was changing the oil on the second gen and I had a lot more room and the oil filter was a lot more accessible than the oil filter that's on this truck. But definitely for guys with a 6.7, don't try to wrap your oil filter in a plastic bag or anything like that. You're still gonna dump it in the bag. It's still gonna run out of there. It's still gonna make a giant mess all over you, all over the truck. And then you're gonna be trying to clean the truck up. Get one of these things. It's like 30 bucks, I think. And then this little oil filter wrench deal was six bucks or seven bucks, I think it was. So definitely worth the investment. For starters, let's get our oil and our oil filter out and show you what we got. So I am going with the trusty Shell Rotella 1540 for this oil change. I think for this here, this is the T5 synthetic. Uh, and I believe this ran right around 36 bucks, 40 bucks or something like that. I forget. And then throw in the Mopar oil filter that's another 12 or 13 bucks. Now I'm going with this. This is what I used to run in the second gen for the longest time. It's a very good oil to run. A lot of guys do run this oil, honestly, but we will be putting AMS oil in the truck at some point. I just couldn't wait around and I put it off for a little while and then things kind of got a little bit past due. And with everything going on in the world right now, shipping companies are all backed up and things are kind of chaotic so i just ran i grabbed this so that we could get the oil done on the truck but you will be seeing me switch the oil up eventually for now 
it's Rotella 1540. We got a two and a half gallon and we got a one gallon. So the deal is, is 12 quarts in the truck, one quart in the oil filter, and then 11 go down the hole. That's the whole two and a half gallon jug right there. And then we will use half of this one gallon because there's four quarts in a gallon, I believe. All right, let's get our oil filter cap all set up here. We got a nut and our little eyelet right here. And this is just so you can adjust it and then thread the nut down to the top of it here and lock it. And I'm sure use this to hook on and fish your filter out or whatever if you got to hook onto it and try to get the filter out because you can't get a good grip on it by hand so we're going to just thread this right down in there like that tighten that nut down and we should be good to go but that's it man that is the tool right there and then you see the threads right there that will go into the top of the oil filter on the one that we're pulling off and on the one that we're going to put in after we fill it up we're gonna be threading this cap on so that it seals up against the filter and doesn't spill shit everywhere. I'm telling you guys, for 30 bucks, you've gotta get one. I was just thinking to myself that I screwed up because when I ordered this stuff from Geno's, I should have ordered a drain valve to put into my oil pan so that I didn't have to put the stock plug back in there. And then next time I go to drain the oil, I could just hit the lever on the drain valve, drain it out, take the plug out, make sure it drains completely, and be good. But I'll have to order one of those for the next oil change and put it in, and then I'll be good from there on out. You guys know the drill. 3 8 ratchet breaker bar. And here we go. You ready for this nasty looking oil? Oh yeah. That is delicious. Just to give you guys a little bit of an idea of this oil condition, well, <laughs> There you go. And quite honestly, I'm sure this new fresh oil that I'm putting in won't take long to begin looking like this due to all the emission stuff that's on the truck. Now the oil filter on the second gen, obviously very easy to get to from right up in here. All I would do was take off the air intake and I could get right to it. However, the design of this is a lot different with the 6.7 engine. You got all the emission stuff here, the EGR cooler, you got the alternator right there. So there's no getting it from up here, even if you were to take off the intake. What you gotta do is come down here and you can see that Ram was so kind to make a little cutout here in the fender liner. Let me make it so you guys can see a little better. They got a little cutout right here in the fender liner, but you can see you got lines and everything there and the narrowest, smallest little window to get that sucker broken free and out of there. So I think you could probably do it with the fender liner in. However, I'm not even gonna waste my time because I know I'm probably gonna end up having to pull the fender liner out anyways, just to make it easier to get to this filter. So I'm gonna go ahead and start removing the screws for the fender liner, get that thing pulled out, and then we'll get our end cap filter wrench on this filter and get it broken free so that we can fill up the new one and install it. So now with our fender liner out, it opens everything up nice and wide so we can get in here a little bit easier and see what we're doing. Still trying to wrap my head around what engineer thought it was a good idea to put a big dent in the intercooler pipe. I mean, come on, don't these guys make the big bucks? And that's the best design you could come up with? So I got the filter wrench on the bottom of the filter and had this longer 3 8 ratchet attached to the bottom of it. And uh, let me just say, I don't know why I never purchased one of these $7 tools in the past. It would have made changing the oil on the second gen so much quicker and easier. And it sure as hell is making this one a walk in the park compared to what it would be if you were trying to get on it with like a strap wrench or something like that. So pop that thing on the bottom of the filter, get yourself a longer ratchet that's 3 8 drive and just give it a little bump and it busts the filter free. You can pull your ratchet out and finish twisting it off by hand. Then stick your billet aluminum filter cap on it so you can tip it and pull your filter out and get the new one put on. I feel like it's gonna take forever for this damn filter to come off of here because I can only turn it an eighth of a turn at a time. They definitely designed these newer vehicles with the hopes that you will take them to a dealership to have all your work done. All right, so we got the filter out and I'm gonna show you real quick how I've got this all set up. So here's what we're looking at. The oil filter goes right here. I've got it all removed and sitting right down here. There's a little cavity. And what I did was just set it straight down in there until I felt like it would hold itself and stay upright 
so that I'm able to slip the oil filter cap in there, get that threaded into the filter, and then what I can do is tip the filter up on its side and pull it right out through here. Jesus. Okay, so now that I got my hands washed up a little bit so I can pick the camera back up, this is still, well, it's still a pain in the ass to get the filter out because you got this little bit of space right here where it's meant to come out the way that they have these lines bent. However, the way that these fittings are right here in these lines, it still doesn't really fit through there that easily with that cap on it and then the wrench right there stuck on the bottom of it. So I had to, I got it started and coming out, but then the wrench on the bottom of the filter was getting hung up. So I finally just tugged it, popped the wrench off there just to get it out because it was starting to leak a little bit because the problem is, is you can't really get this tightened down tight enough with one hand. You're not able to hold the filter and really thread this down there tight to make a seal on the seal of the filter. So it was dribbling a little bit of oil out. You're going to make a little bit of a mess, but at least you're not emptying the filter and making a huge mess. So this thing is definitely a lifesaver and you're going to want it because if you don't have that and you try to pull your oil filter out from in there or even put the new one in, you're going to you're going to regret it and wish that you did not do the job without that little oil filter cap. All right, we're good. You don't have to have it that tight to uh, put the new filter back in. Apparently I just couldn't get a good seal on the old filter, which is why we made a little bit of a mess pulling it out. But right now this thing is not that snug. It's still loose enough to where I should be able to get it out with one hand. Okay, new filters in there. We didn't make a mess. I'm gonna pop that cap off and get our wrench on the bottom of it with our ratchet and go ahead and get this thing tightened down. And here comes the cap. So we are good. We're gonna start by pouring in this two and a half gallons, which is the equivalent to 10 quarts of oil. We already have one quart in the filter, so that'll be 11 in total. And then we have to pour one more quart out of that other jug in to equal 12 as our final number. My microphone and my camera battery are both running out of juice right now, so I'm gonna start to wrap the video up as I wait for that last quart of oil to drain into the engine. Once that's done, all we gotta do is throw the oil cap on, start it up, make sure we got good oil pressure, no leaks at the filter or the drain plug, and then I'm gonna slap the fender liner in and call it a day. But guys, there is absolutely no getting around it. If you own a third gen or fourth gen with the 6.7 engine, you need to pick yourself up one of these oil filter caps from Gino's Garage because it is an absolute must. It's a lifesaver. Unless you want to create a huge mess on your truck as you pull the filter out and put the new one in after you've primed it with fresh oil, by all means, do your thing. But I highly, highly suggest and recommend this oil filter cap because it really does save the day when getting this job done and makes it just a lot easier and faster to get it done so you can move on to something else. But other than that, I think we should be good. Yep, that funnel is empty, so I am gonna go ahead and throw the oil cap into the valve cover, pick up this mess real quick, fire up the truck, make sure the oil pressure is good, we don't have any leaks, and uh, then we'll wrap up this video. I gotta turn it around so that it's facing the proper way. That should work. Let's fire this girl up. Mm. Damn, that door needs to get lubricated. Man, she sounds good. Listen to her purring all pretty like. 
I think we're in good shape. So I'm gonna end the video here. Make sure you're subbed with those notifications on so you get notified as soon as the videos go live with the new fourth gen build. Hit that like button for me on the way out. It's greatly appreciated and really does help the channel out with growth and getting the videos recommended to new people. Check out all those links down below to everyone helping out with the new fourth gen build and fourth gen content. And I'll see you guys very soon in the next video. Peace.